All right, my friends, Ryan here with Vet Source back in the field, the production field today, where I'm going to be detailing the removal of these trailing arms, specifically these bolts that go in these trailing arms that hold these to the rear suspension of the C3 Corvette. Now, normally, uh, if you've seen my other videos, I just did one complete video of removal of a rear suspension from a C4. These are intricate enough though to uh, warrant detailing these in individual pieces so you can see exactly how this thing is put together. It's very similar in theory to the C4s. C4 is basically just an evolution of C2, C3 where you've got uh, drive shaft, prop shaft here to your pinion input, output to your half shafts. And then of course a control arm or a spindle which is considered a trailing arm in here where it's tied in three points of contact you've got one here you've got one here on the shock tower like a c4 and you got your camber adjustment which is also just like a c4 and here you've got a brace underneath here that fits in now the thing about this that's so aggravating though is that this is all metal and it tends to corrode over time just like this one has so you can see nothing here looks like it would be friendly to get out of here um, and most of the time it's not now we did have a benefit in this case where uh, we had some hardware that was replaced here that makes this easier for us but the biggest thing that causes people frustration with these would be this bolt right here now the body is off of this car so I have a lot more room to work with you can see there's the head of the front trailing arm bolt there is the back side of it tucked in that pocket and you can see with the body on the car you have very little room to work with to get that bolt on it's also got these shims here that uh, basically determine the angle of the track the rear track when you're talking about four wheel alignment on a Corvette this is what they're referring to is the shim stack up here and then of course these shims are held in place with a very long cotter pin here now at some point in the past somebody replaced this one with stainless hardware which this is my first time I've actually had of all the Corvettes I've dismantled this is the first time I've had torn one apart that had stainless hardware and I gotta say that was just incredibly easy I was very happy with how easy that came apart these are normally quite uh, something that'll leave you screaming and hollering at it after a while but what I'm gonna do is illustrate how we get that bolt out first so you can see the procedure and we'll hopefully our GoPro will not um, overheat on us, which it's not right now, so that's good. And I'll keep from knocking it over, which is one of my things that I do frequently. But that seems to be a pretty good spot for it right there. So first things first, it is still hot enough to sweat out here, that's for sure. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab this cotter pin out of the way. And this is just a castle nut with cotter pin. I actually did a really good job of a cotter pin installation. Being an old aircraft guy, um, I do appreciate when I see cotter pins and things like that put in correctly. Um, not that you have safety wire on most car components, I'm sure on race cars they do, but um, it's always nice to see something of that effect. Of course, I forgot to turn my phone off, but we'll just let that go to voicemail for the moment. Um, let's see here. And then what we'll need, this is just a 11 16 bolt here. A little bit tight. And see that, that's the benefit of that stainless steel hardware right there. All right. Then on the back side here, we're gonna get this big cotter pin out that big cotter pin is used to hold that shim pack in place so it won't go anywhere let's see how easily see even with the body off this is not <clears throat> terribly easy to get to but you can see this has is not giving me 
that much trouble. A little bit, but not much. There we go, look at that. These very rarely ever come out this easily. Like I said, this is the first time I've actually had that happen. Now let's swoop around this other side so you can see where that shim pack is. See these shims right here? Like I said, you've got, you've got thinning, you've got thick shims, okay? And what these do, they'll determine the angle of the front, which changes the angle of the track on the back side. Again, that's when they're talking about four wheel alignment. And look at that. I've never had these come out that easy. So these are these stainless steel shims. These are usually rusted and corroded into place. And the worst case scenario, you've got to get up a knife, uh, not a, a knife, but a sawzall in there to get that out. Now, I'm going to go ahead and gently tap here. And use our pry bar here. Hopefully you guys will be able to see that. I've got the angle right. We're just going to drive that out a little bit more. Okay. And we'll take this one. Now imagine, like I said, trying to get this out with the body and everything on. So it's one thing if the body's on and it will come out easily, but it's an entirely other matter if the body is in place and you've got rusted hardware. Enough to make a grown man cry. Let's see, we're a little bit, because of that pocket, the way that sits in there. So what we'll do, Amazing. All the years I've been doing this, never have been that lucky before. So let's get set up for the next section of this. Let me get my tools rearranged. I'll be right back with you guys. Hang tight. All right, let's get back at it here where we're going to disconnect uh, one of our other points of contact here. This one here is our upper shock mount, which honestly, it's easier to take it apart from here than it is the lower side. Let's see if this one will come out and cooperate with this though. Or if I'm gonna need my extension. Yeah, maybe our extension, let's see. Hmm, not a good spot for this. Okay. get our I know I just had that of course this one is not captive on the back side so you've got to get and hold that bolt from the back side too. All right, let's see here. All right, now that one was nice and rusty. There's my sunshine again, our cue. And we'll go ahead and tap this out on this back side. Yeah, 
not the direction I wanted to go. ahead and get our trailing arm disconnected from there let's see if I can get you a better angle so let's see what I'm doing here we go we're gonna cut break loose these 916 right here if these completely had the wrong straps on them But they use some good hardware, but the wrong straps. Not big enough for that. And let's just go ahead and shift this. Okay. will break loose from here and there's the trailing arm pretty much loose you can see there I've got that one bolt on the spring holding it what I'll probably do is tear that down with that rear differential there but you can see this whole assembly is out and loose in fact that bushing right there is completely gone on both sides so I might just pull that out here in a minute but i've still got that back bolt to get out so give me a second we'll do that real quick hold on all right so let's go ahead and get this camera adjustment bolt out of the way and what we'll have to do is attack it from this side over here we're getting this bolt right here this nut off of here of course it's not stainless steel hardware but that's okay we'll work on it and of course this is the bolt that you'll use the off-center bolt that actually will adjust your camber for your rear trailing arm this bracket that's hooked to specifically has little notches cut into it and they get to be hard to see after a while. I'm not going to touch this bolt yet because I did heat it up a little bit to make it easier. Let's see how hot it is still. It's still pretty hot. And of course, forgot my gloves today. Come on, bud. The last second. threads to take out of there. <laughs> well, this is just
Wow, okay. All right, now, let's see if this guy will come out of here for us. Oh yeah, there we go. Now that side is hot too. We'll take that, pull that that way. Wipe the sweat off our face. Let's see if we can pull this this direction. Get that out of that pocket. Looks like I'm gonna be stuck here for a minute. There we go. So I gotta get this last bolt off. I'll be right back. Hang on. All right. Well, as luck would have it, that spring bolt did not want to come out of there. It wasn't going anywhere, even after I heated it up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove the spring from the center here drop that down and then i've got better access to that bolt so i can either cut it or get it out of the way somehow of course that one's stuck too but that's what i was talking about with everything under here being metal you got a lot more of those effects of the road grime and all the other stuff that happens but anyway oh and that one's really stuck let's see if we can get this to cooperate Funny, looks like they stripped that one out and put a helicoil in there. Oh, hello, car. Please don't fall on me. All right, or frame, I should say. And there we go. There's that custom mount for that fiberglass monolith spring they got in there. And of course, that fell too. So, anyway, what you see is we've got this loose from the center and I should be able to get this out a little bit here let's see what a mess this made today of course that's what I get for the trailing arm bolts coming out nice and easy let's go ahead and put this back in here get this out of the way if I can We'll go ahead and drop this back down, pull that out. All right, there is your trailing arm loose from the assembly. Now, I'm still going to have to cut that, but I'll end up having to do that off camera. But you can see there's our points of contact there one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then of course that spring bolt makes seven, eight with the camber rod and it's out. So that's gonna wrap this one up today. Guys, next time I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to get this center section out of here, the third member. And we'll do that in another video. So time for a water break and I'll catch up with you guys later. Thanks for watching.